Good morning, this is the Breville Breeze Tea Express, BES870 in brushed stainless steel. Uh, this is the factory second or like returned unit. So it's basically a brand new unit uh, that's used once or twice. Um, and it, it presents in new condition, so basically no scratches, all the accessories are included. And also it comes with warranty, so um, the machine looks great. I uh, will make a coffee on it, on this video, just to make sure everything is nice and, nice and working. Um, and I'll begin with the, my usual routine. So I'll, I'll turn on the machine. Usually it takes about a minute to, to reach temperature. You see the button come on. Uh, I grab my, my cup, um, and put it underneath with the handle locked. I'm using an aftermarket handle. This is my own bottomless handle. Uh, the stock handle is included as well, of course. It's the normal Breville porta filter. Uh, anyway, I press the double button to give uh, some hot water, so this is going to warm up your porta filter um, and your uh, obviously it'll warm up the machine and also warm, warms up the cup. So, if you warm up these components, you ensure that your coffee comes out hot as well. Uh, otherwise, if I make a coffee with a really cold cup, it's like 15 degrees today, um, the coffee will get cold. So, I do one or two blank shots, and in the meantime, I go grab my milk jug, grab some milk. You can do that once or twice. Let's try the single button now for you. Awesome. So once that's done, we can uh, put it aside or something. Let's put it on top. Um, you can also turn on the machine maybe 10 minutes, 5-10 minutes in advance and it will uh, warm up as well. Um, so it actively heats up as long as it's on uh, with this model. I will take out the porta filter, making sure I don't scratch the machine because like I said it's basically brand new. Um, clean the basket, so I'm using the double basket. Uh, the machine obviously comes with the, the all four baskets, so it's uh, two single wall baskets and two double wall baskets. The double wall baskets, or known as pressurized baskets, are to be used with pre-ground coffee. Uh, so if you get uh, your coffee pre-ground for whatever reason, if you get it as a gift or if you got pre-ground coffee by mistake. Or for example, decaf, sometimes you can only find it pre-ground. Uh, you get the, the, the pressurized basket and use the pre-ground with those. Whereas if you're using the grinder and you're fr grinding fresh coffee, single wall will taste better and it'll actually be also easier to clean uh, compared to the pressurized baskets. You don't have to hit it as hard. Uh, the only disadvantage with single wall baskets is you have to get the settings right. You have to use good beans, you have to use the correct amount of coffee and you have to use the correct grind size. Uh, if your coffee is stale, it won't give you pressure. If your grind size is too large, it won't give you pressure. And if your dose is too low, you won't get high pressure as well. So that th these two components are responsible for the pressure. Uh, on the other hand, if like I grind too fine, if my pressure, if my um, grind size is too fine, uh, or if I overpack the porta filter with too much coffee in here, uh, either of those scenarios will give me very high pressure, very slow extraction. Um, so if I make a coffee now and the flow is way too quick and uh, I get a lot of coffee very quickly, then that tells me my beans are old, or my grind size is large, or I didn't put enough coffee. Uh, and if we are, if you, I'm talking a lot here, but this is really important for setting up the machine. If I um, see very little coffee coming out, little to no coffee coming out, that tells me that maybe I'm grinding too fine, or I've overpacked the port filter. We can eliminate the We can eliminate. Um, the variables by using a scale. So I'm using a scale here to measure the input and output, and I will be dosing exactly 18 grams. This double basket takes 18 grams. So we take that out of the out of the um, the playing field. So we know we have the right amount of coffee. I'm also going to use fresh coffee. I, I opened this bag yesterday. It's the Aldi medium beans. Sorry, it's the Aldi dark beans, um, and they are roasted on. If I look at the serial number, I can actually decode when it was roasted. It should be uh, 6th of July. It's only like last week, two weeks ago. Um, yeah, two weeks ago. 
So 6th of July, uh, that's pretty good. So these beans are probably good for another month or two. Uh, but yeah, I just opened them yesterday. Make sure you always close the bag of beans tightly with a clip or just store it in a vacuum canister. Um, so I'm gonna aim for 18 grams in. I have it on grind size four. Let's have a look. May or may not be too quick. Um, so we'll, let's try number three. So I'll turn on the grinder, then move it to three. So we'll use three. Three looks a little bit finer and maybe more appropriate for espresso. Um, so I can see the size being large or fine, but that just gives me a very rough idea. The only way to know if I have the correct um, grind size is to make a copy. So that's what, what I'll be doing. And something that not many people know is that each bean will require different grind sizes. So, and even if you buy the same brand twice, maybe if you buy it in September versus buying it in June, uh, or like February, it's, it's, it's going to be slightly different depending on the weather, depending on the age of the bag. Uh, can be overwhelming, but just keep that out of the mind for now. Let's just make a coffee. Um, so, a uh, few settings to worry about. So, we've got grind size set at three, that's done. We've got the grind amount. Uh, so, this is how long the grinder will grind for. I usually keep it at 12 o'clock and uh, test it that way. Uh, double will give you the double quantity right away. I personally like to keep it on single and do it twice. This gives me um, more control over uh, the tamping. So I can actually pause it halfway, tamp it, make space for the next batch. So this will be more cleaner, I would say, compared to grinding the double shot all at once. So I'll grind one shot, I'll keep it at 12 o'clock, and hopefully if we have the setting right, we should get 9 grams, because 9 times 2 is 18. Amazing. What did we get? It's 8 grams. So we'll go to 2 o'clock instead of 12 o'clock position. And before we grind, I'm just going to top it up. So topping it up means holding the button. This is 9 grams. So. 9 grams, once you get the first dose, press it lightly with the tamper to make way for the second batch. And this is my second dose. We got <clears throat> 9 grams, perfect. So 2 o'clock, grind size 3 will give you 9 grams using Aldi beans. Um, I'm gonna, before I tamp it with a tamper, I'm going to spread the coffee evenly across the basket. So uh, once we grab the tamper and press, it's even pressure. We don't want it to be sort of concentrated in the middle when you have like a mountain of coffee in the middle and you press that. The sides won't be as tight. So bunch it up and then press. <laughs> One quick tip I like to give customers is Look at the depth of the tamper after you press. And if the silver part disappears, you've got the right amount of coffee. So this is, should be the rough depth of the, of, the, of the coffee after you press it. Before you press it, it should be sort of level and flush with the basket top or the rim here. Then once you press it down, the silver part should disappear. If it doesn't disappear, if you, if you press down and it's at this, at this uh, height and not going any deeper, that's too much coffee. You can confirm that if you have a scale. Uh, and if it sinks too deep into the basket, so all the way back down here, that's too little coffee. N nice, so it's nicely tamped, even. Uh, I'm also, um, I usually say clean the edges. You don't want coffee to be here, otherwise it might build up on the machine. And I'm gonna lock it in to the six o'clock position. Right. Um, two things before I, um, start making the coffee. It's also, um, another variable is the, the length of the coffee. So how much coffee you extract. So in terms of the input, we put in 18 grams. 
terms of what comes out, it should be 36 grams. I will aim usually for 35 to 40. Uh, I'm not exactly uh, precise about that. It doesn't have to be on the dot, 36. Um, so I'll aim for 36, and that should take 30 seconds. That's the standard uh, double dose, two to one ratio in 30 seconds. Uh, now remember what I said before about too slow or too fast? Well, how do you know what too slow or too fast means? Too slow would be, if it takes more than 30 seconds to get, that's the 36 gram dose. Um, so if it's dripping one drop at a time, it'll probably take two minutes to, to, to give you 36 grams. Um, if it's a slow, consistent stream, maybe a whole minute to give you 36 grams. And on the other hand, what's too quick? Too quick means you get the 36 gram shot in 10 or 15 seconds. Even 20 seconds is borderline quick. Um, so that's how you know what quick and slow means. And if you don't have a scale that's, I guess, manageable, you can just eyeball it. Uh, or at least use the scale for the first few coffees to know what 36 looks like. For me, it's sort of up here. So three quarters to the black line. That's what 36 grams looks like for me. Uh, so I'll turn on the scale again. We'll measure. Oh, also we have a hot water tap here. So you have a hot water tap to get hot water for long black coffees, warming up cups, I don't know, tea bags, whatever you like. Um, I also like to add a bit of sugar to my coffee, so I, I, I add that a little bit of hot water to help the sugar dissolve. Perfect. Just like that. Mix it up. So these buttons here are programmed from factory to go for, I think, 60 mils of water and 100 mils of water. In terms of coffee, that translates to maybe 30 and 50 or 60 mils. Uh, I can't remember, but usually they're a bit too long. We will try the double bus sorry, the double button and see what that gives us out of the box from factory. Um, or we can reprogram it. So it's, um, I usually recommend to customers to program it with, the, with their coffee. So grabbing their coffee, grinding it, tamping it, and uh, to program it, I, I'll just program it for you because I think this will go for a bit too long, but from experience, it'll go for like 60 mils, which is too much. And this will go for 30 or 25 mils, which is too little. So we don't want either of those. I'm gonna set it up for you so that it's more plug and play. Um, to program, have everything ready. And then the, you only do this for the first time, of course. You don't do this every time. Only for the first time you're setting it up. You press program. Then the button you want to program, for example, the double button, and then it'll start making coffee. Press it again when uh, you're happy with that volume and it will save and remember that amount. I'm also going to time it. I've got my timer here on the scale. Oh, look at that. Very good. Maybe flowing too quickly. We are at 22, we're at 22 seconds now, and let's see, I could be wrong, but this is probably 30 to 40 grams, this is 39 grams, amazing, 38.9, so sorry about the mess, but looks like we got it right-ish, uh, maybe a bit finer would help, but yeah, this is, just take a photo, this is... This happened in 22 seconds. So a bit too quick. Uh, borderline, like I said, I was aiming for 30 seconds. But it looks like we got it pretty close in the first attempt. I won't do another attempt just because it's, like I said, it's up to you and what beans you use. Uh, if I set it up to my beans exactly, then you get the machine and you have different beans. I've just wasted my time because you have to set it up again. Um, so I'm going to use this shot. Looks good. Smelt. Smells good as well. Um, and if you add sugar and milk, probably don't, won't notice a few grams more or less uh, or the shot is a bit too quick or a bit too slow uh, but the ideal would be that we get that 38 grams or 36 grams in 30 seconds not in 22 had I let it go for 30 uh, for 30 seconds I would have probably gotten um, much more than, than 40 so maybe 50 55 
in uh, in that in that shop. So that, that wouldn't taste good if, it, if it's over if it's a lot over forty, it'll start becoming more bitter, or like hard to describe, over extracted. Um, so I'll leave the settings as is. When you get the machine, you just use the same button, the double, and you'll get a similar amount of coffee to me. If you have similar beans and similar settings. What I will recommend is using grind size number two. So grind size number three gave us a bit too quick of a result. Next, I would use grind size number two. I wouldn't jump to grind size number one right away. I'll try number two with your beans. Or, or even if you have uh, different freshly roasted beans. Like most supermarket beans aren't fresh. And that's the problem. So if you use a cheap bean, you for, your coffee will flow quickly. But if you actually go to the roaster or the cafe that you like uh, and buy their beans, you will get good coffee um, almost always. Um, yeah, so uh, fresh coffee usually doesn't need to be ground really fine, like cheaper beans or supermarket beans. Now, Aldi, the brand I'm using, the Lazio brand, it's pretty good. Um, and like I said, it's only two weeks old. Usually they fresh it, ro <laughs> they roast it fresh uh, here in Melbourne. And um, I usually recommend them as, as, as a bean uh, for, for users getting into coffee for the first time. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to actually leave that at number three. I'll let you make a coffee and see what results you get. If you get quick results, meaning that this double shot happens in 20 seconds rather than 30 seconds, uh, which may or, not, may, or may, or not, <laughs> may or may not be a problem for you. But yeah, if, if you notice it's too quick, you can just go down to grind size number two, try again. Keeping in mind that once you change the grind size, you have to let the grinder run for another three seconds three or five seconds to get rid of whatever is inside. So there's probably like three or five grams of coffee uh, in the shoot or under the burrs and like mixed mixed in with whatever beans you use. Sorry, uh, there's, there's a few grams of coffee in the, in the path pathway or the passageway. So once you change the grind size, there's a few grams left. So you have to purge out sort of and leave it running for let's say five seconds to be safe and get rid of that five seconds worth. Um, and after that, you'll be confident uh, that your coffee will be fresh uh, and um, the, the correct ground size that you want. That's a lot of talking. Um, let's not do any more of that. <laughs> uh, I like to flush after I, I make a coffee to clean the group head. I usually have my portafilter um, under, but I've already cleaned my portafilter as I was speaking. So yeah, once you flush, just grab a tissue clean whatever coffee grounds, there's always a bit of coffee grounds left, even after you flush. Um, also, good to keep the machine nice and dry, it'll look better if it stays nice and dry. Um, awesome. Next, steaming, uh, I will... I'll be using full cream, cold full cream milk filled up to this level, just below the spout. I'm using my own milk jug. Your machine comes with a standard non-thermometer milk jug, uh, which honestly the thermometer isn't too important. Like it's, it's a nice thing to have, but m mostly you'll be feeling by touch. So when the milk jug gets too hot, that's when you'll stop. Uh, the technique, I can give you a basic technique, but there's probably a million videos on YouTube on how to steam. Well, not a million, a thousand videos on YouTube on how to steam properly. Uh, on this machine, you, you turn it on, you wait 10 or 15 seconds until it starts outputting steam, turn it off, position it, turn it back on. In terms of the positioning, uh, keep it at an angle, try to keep the milk spinning, and keep the tip close to the surface for the first few seconds, and then dunk it. The longer you stay close to the surface with the tip, the more froth you'll give. The milk. Turn it off, position it, turn it back on. Spinning the milk. So now I'm near the, near, the, um, near the surface, so it's giving me that hissing sound. So I'll stay here for 10 seconds. 9, 10. And then I'll raise the jug. So for a latte, usually the milk is more flatter than a cappuccino, so you don't have too much froth. Um, or foam. And then after you raise the jug, you stop aerating the milk, you stop incorporating those bubbles. And now it's just spinning and mixing it up and making it nice and smooth. 
I'll keep it running until it's too hot to the touch. So it's nearing that stage. Make sure you don't spill it over the sides. Now it's too hot to the touch. Turn it off. And then the machine will cool down. Once you see the buttons light up, uh, it's ready to make another coffee. Give it a purge, just to clean the inside. And also, very important, grab your uh, towel or a wet cloth. Cool, now it's ready to make another espresso with the boiler back to temperature. Uh, always important to wipe and purge. If you don't purge the tip, you'll get a milk clot or a milk plug that will stop you from steaming next, the next time you use the machine. So it's always recommended you purge and clean. Um, and if you get that blockage of the milk horn, you can clean it with a tip, but it's recommended you prevent that from happening. Otherwise it might put too much pressure on the steam line. So the steam line is not recommended to hold steam and pressurize it. Uh, it's, it's only to, to steam the milk, right? And maybe we were a bit too ambitious with frothing. It looks like we have a lot of foam. So maybe I kept it near the surface for more than 10 seconds because I was talking. Uh, maybe I should have done five seconds close to the surface. But yeah, it looks like we have a fairly rich, thick foam. I'm gonna knock the jug on the counter to break any big air bubbles. And then I'm gonna swirl it around to mix it up. Not too bad, not too bad. And awesome. Quickly clean up. I'm not a barista, I don't usually do latte art, but sometimes I get the occasional pattern. I've got a leaf or a tulip or whatever in here. Um, looks really nice. I think you can do better coffees than me. I'm confident of it. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the machine. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. And I'll see you soon. Cheers.